In my previous videos, I have discussed curve fitting many, many times, but I always limited it to Excel. Excel can do a good job, but it's a lot of work and you may not have to know some equations by yourself. I was made aware of this website, mycurvefit.com, that does an excellent job. Uh, I have so far never promoted any tools like these, but I make an exception for this one because it's very user friendly. It has a v not a very steep learning curve like most other tools do. So it is, it is a great tool. So what, it's, what it does is, this is their mission. It does a great job in this kind of things. And I'm going to show you how beautiful it works. So I, I want you to realize that when you just go to the website mycurvefit.com you, you are very limited in what you can do. You can put your data in two columns here, but only up to 12 rows. If you have much longer files, you have to join. And then each time you log in, you have much more capacity, which is free of cost. So I'm going to do that now. Now I can do much, much more. I'm going to use Excel files so I don't have to type data. You can take them from any program. Excel is one of them. Let's say you want this plotted. So I'm going to highlight all my data. Don't select the label, but the first one under the label. Control shift arrow down, control shift arrow to the right. And make sure that they are always two columns and they have to be adjacent to each other. Control C, go to your website, clear what is in there already, click under the access title in the first column, Control V. If you want to give that a title, you just click there and give it a title. Same for the Y axis. You can also do it from here, give it a title and do it for the other axis. Then you have to decide on a good fit method. If you are good in your field, you probably have an intuitive feeling for that. I'm going to make this a polynomial one. The one of the fifth order is a complicated equation, but it does usually a very good job. It predicts well. And I got this curve. You can just close this by clicking again. If you want it open again, you can either click there where it says what it does and click again. You probably want to see what information does it come up with. Click on this drop down button. It tells you R squared, which is very high. That means it predicts very well. Then the adjusted R squared, what does all of this mean? Click on what is this and it tells you what all of that stands for. I will leave that up to you. Notice that we have five coefficients and there is one extra, that is the intercept. You can hide this again if you want to, or leave it open. I'm going to another example, a power curve. Control C for I had highlighted everything already, minus the labels. Clear the screen. Control V. So we are going to make it a power curve, nonlinear power. And that's what we got. It has a good R squared, even a good adjusted R squared. But you probably want to linearize your two axes. So how do you linearize it? By making this one logarithmic and that one logarithmic. We are going to do an exponential half time one. A good example is radioactivity, of course. Copy it, copy the information clear what you have there, click in the first column, copy it, make it non-linear exponential half-life, and you're probably surprised to see this. Why? Because your settings for the logarithmic axis are still effective. You have to really turn that off and set it back to linear to get 
which you probably expected. <coughs> now, let's say you want to find out what the number would be at the x-axis 20. So I would like to predict. So we are going to open the predict option. And notice that in this case someone had already changed the two axes. He had swapped it. I'm going to swap it to back x-axis y-axis. And I'm going to say if the x-axis is 20, what would the y-axis be? And that value kicks in automatically. And besides, it shows up here in your curve. So that's another great tool of this program. Let's go to the next one. We want an EC50 determination. That is a sigmoidal curve, or S-shaped curve. This is the information we have. Select your data. Control shift arrow down, control shift arrow to the right. Clear the information. Implement it. And notice that again it remembers what you had done before here, so we have to clear that out. And you probably don't even want to see that screen now. So let's make it a sigmoidal curve, nonlinear, sigmoidal. You have a symmetrical one, an asymmetrical one. I'm going to do the 5PL one. So that comes up with five coefficients. And it does a, a pretty good job. If you work with EC50, you probably want to determine what is halfway on this axis. I calculated that very simply here already. I said take the lowest one, add to it the difference between the highest and the lowest divided by 2, that is halfway. So I just copy that number, Control C. I go to my predict section. You want that value in the y axis, correct? That has to be in the first column, so you have to swap this and type it there. And that will come up with this point. That should be minus 9.57 on this axis. Before I forget it, I'm going to clear that one. I swap it back to normal, otherwise you might forget that for your next import. Then we are going to show you if you have a power one like this, for instance, and you would like labels at each set of data, then what would you do? Control Shift C, clear, Control Shift V, that's the curve. We are going to make it power, nonlinear power. It does a great job, it thinks I really clustered here and there, you can probably avoid that and make it look better by making that axis again logarithmic. It is a power curve, so both axes should be logarithmic. If it's exponential, you want only one of the two axes. Now let's say this one stands for a fly organism. So I click there and add a label, or you can flag it if you want to. And I'm going to say this is for the fly organism. You can change the color, etc., and it will show you what that does. A 5PL one where I have to swap things probably. Let me show you what I mean. Control C, clear this screen, import the information, and this is probably not what you wanted because I have to swap my information. And then I can make it a nonlinear 5PL one and I get a curve like this. Then we are going to do a linear one with a swap and we are going to transform it, actually. Why do you want to transform data sometimes? Because if you don't, they are not distributed according to a normal distribution. 
So sometimes you have to transform your data set. Let's copy this information. Clear what we have. Control V. We still have our axes logarithmic. And there is no reason in this case why we should. I usually change that immediately so you don't forget. And that is what we got. Sometimes you want to just swap the information. And you may want to, what I told you already, we may want to change the Y values. Advanced. So this is not making the axis linear or nonlinear, but we are going to say to the Y values, what if we transform them with a log function? And that's what the result would be. Now the, the data in the Y column are more normally distributed, and that is sometimes what you want to achieve, sometimes with the natural logarithm, sometimes with a logarithm base 10 or 2 or whatever you choose, according to your information. Finally, we are going to use this one, and we are going to copy that, place it in the cleared screen. Let's not forget to set this back to normal. You can even hide the advanced one and store your information there. And you get a very nice curve. In this case I chose poly uh, nonlinear 5PL asymmetrical sigmoidal. And there is a very beautiful option here. Two buttons. One determines how do you want to export it as an Excel file, PowerPoint or Adobe. And when you click on export, it is going to do that. And it's going to store that in Excel. Uh, when you enable editing, you can do much more work on it. For instance, you can change the background colors for all of this. But what is more important, I think, is you have your coefficients. It tells you what kind of curve fitting method you used, and it gives you original data. I think that is a beautiful part of this program. Again, the program lets you do all of that. Very powerful. Very beautiful. Uh, I want you to experiment with it on your own, and I wish you good luck with this experience.